Hey, Peerless Road Church, I am so glad that your family is joining my family tonight. I'm recording this earlier because I want to be able to sit with my family and connect with you tonight and then go on to our different platforms because Pastor Kathy and Pastor Josh both have something for my family. And I'm just so excited to join with you tonight. As we talk about the Word, I want to just sort of bring you uh, into perspective of where I feel like a lot of us are at right now. There's so much going on, so much news, so much noise. We just need to pull away. Well, last night I had one of those moments. Uh, my daughter, uh, youngest daughter, Braylon, turned nine years old, the last single digit of her life. And it hit me pretty hard last night. And so uh, I wasn't going to tell her to go to bed. So it was about 1130 and Bennett was already asleep. But Brooke and Braylon were watching uh, some TV and one last show before they had to go to bed. And I just sort of sl slipped into my office slash Bennett's room uh, to catch a moment to myself. And this is sort of, so just jump in real quick for me for just a few moments and I'll sort of bring you where we were at. See, I, when I moved into the home that we live in now, uh, I had an office. And then Bennett came. And he was a complete surprise. You know, didn't see it coming. So my office turned into what was supposed to be half nursery, half office. Well, it's three-fourths nursery, one wall at him. And well, above my um, desk is this scripture that you see behind me on the wall. It comes from Joshua 1 and 9, and it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Well, last night I slipped into uh, my uh, Bennett's room slash my office, and I was sitting in his little recliner sometimes where I rock him to sleep and different things, and I got some of Braylon's ice cream, you know, and I'm just sitting there all by myself. Just needed some silence. Just needed a moment with God. And as I was sitting there between, and I realized for just a few moments, I was sort of in the same exact place where you and I are. I was in the middle of the two most important areas of my life, or the two most prominent areas of my life. I was in an area that encompassed part of my family, and in that same area, it encompassed my ministry, the two most important areas of my life, right? And I was sitting there wondering about everything that's going on. Where do we go? How long are we going to be on online church and different things? And already, even that, even earlier that evening, we got the notification that schools were going to be out till April 24th. And it caused us to think another month. And some of you as parents are thinking the same thing. Another month of my kids being at home, you know, and there's so many emotions running right now. And I want to remind you that this past week that we read from Jeremiah 29, and I want to remind you that what we're going through every day, every minute of that 24-hour day, God is carrying us through. You're not alone. Single parent, you're not parenting by yourself. Mom and dad, you're not parenting by yourself. Those of you that don't have kids at home, you're not living by yourselves. God is carrying us all through this moment. And we need to remember that. But at the same time, I felt like I was in the middle of those two places, still in the middle of the unknown, not knowing what's going to take place. What is Wednesday, March 25th, going to carry? What does April 1st look like? So many emotions are running through your church leaders' minds right now. So I encourage you to pray for us. But I was taken back to a man that I have modeled and I see working in my own ministry so much, and that's the man called Joshua. Joshua was a man of God. He was a warrior. I mean, he was a warrior. He was the man who was able to lead God's children into a promised land. And immediately I was brought back to Jeremiah 29, 13, that if we sought God with all their heart at that time, that they would find him and that God would be found by them. And I was reminded, much like I found myself in a similar situation, that I had my family, and I was in the middle of my family, in the middle of my ministry, and then I was taken back to when I became your lead pastor and stopped being your youth pastor. Man, Pastor Sutton was such an amazing pastor. And I felt so overwhelmed. I felt like my Moses had left me. And you know the one scripture that literally got me through those moments and those times? It was Joshua 1 and 9. 
In fact, it was the whole chapter of Joshua, chapter 1. It was powerful. So if you would, let me go to it for just a few moments. It says in Joshua chapter 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get up, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give you, to the Israelites. I will give you every place that you set your foot on, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea to the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise to Joshua in that moment. He says in verse 6, he, in the next couple of verses, he gives, he gives and reiterates a powerful statement that we hear. He tells Joshua in verse 6, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their forefathers to give them. Verse 7, Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. He says, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not, let the do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a powerful promise. You know, when I think about uh, what we're going through and sort of we're in the unknown, much like jo where Joshua was. Joshua had been the aid to Moses. Moses had been leading them. And for those of us that have parents, teachers have been leading our children all year. And when we see some of the stuff that comes in, we feel hopeless, much like probably how Joshua felt. But I want you to know something. God knew we were going to be in this moment, in this exact period of time, when He gave you your children. Can you imagine that? That God, when He orchestrated for your children to be born and to be in the grade level that they're at, He knew that the coronavirus was going to hit in 2020. And the word that He gave to Joshua applies to me and you right now whether it's in the middle of your ministry or, the, or, or the, of your ministry to your family or the ministry of your job that you might not be on right now. He looks and says, be strong and courageous. Don't be terrified. Why? Because teachers are able to help. There's online part. Don't be terrified about the lack of food. Thankfully, Bradley County and Cleveland City Schools are doing an amazing job of not just making food available, they're delivering it to us. So take advantage. I know that your kids are eating way more than they probably should right now. Don't be terrified. Don't be, don't be scared. But lean, lean on, the, on the passage of Scripture that not just once, not just twice, but three times God instructs Joshua to remember he tells them, I know that it may seem unknown. I know it seems scared. And even maybe some of your students right now, if I'm speaking to you because tonight's family worship, don't be afraid of the problems. Don't be anxious for what's going on right now. God is in complete control. God has your family in the palm of His hands. God has his, your mom and dad in the palm of His hands. And God has you in the palm of His hands. The mighty God is watching over you. And can I tell you, he spoke to Joshua and he said, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you. For those of us that accept to Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, he's not just the God that's up in heaven. He's our God. He's your God. He can handle your prayers. He can handle our prayers. He can handle your fears. He can handle the anxious thoughts that you may have. He knows exactly where He's taking you in this moment. He told Joshua, don't be, don't be scared, don't be terrified, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
Now, that's the Old Testament, all right? So God spoke that to Joshua, and we know that Joshua not only would, would be a courageous leader, he would inherit the plan that God had for him. He would inherit the land that God gave to the Israelites. He would see kingdoms fall. He would see nations be plundered. He would see the walls of Jericho come crashing down. Why? Because he had faith. Can I tell you something about what fear does and what scared and anxious thoughts do? Fear paralyzes us, but faith, it mobilizes us. Fear causes us to stop dead in our tracks. Fear causes us to look at a problem or to look at an English uh, 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 sentence or something, and it causes us to be scared. Some of us in our in Peerless Road Church have lost our jobs, and fear could cause us to stop in our tracks, cause us to literally stop living life. But I want to remind you, what he told the people in Jeremiah in exile in Jeremiah 29, don't stop being the people of God. Don't stop being a mighty man of God in this moment. Dads, don't stop being a powerful man of God to lead your family. Be strong. Be courageous. Mom, be strong and courageous. Hold each other up. If you're a single mom or a single dad, don't stop being powerful people of God to your children. If you're a single, don't stop being a powerful single. If you're a senior, don't stop being a powerful senior. I'm looking at our generation, and we want to take care of your physical needs, seniors, because for so long you have taken care of us. We need the innovation and the creativity of this younger generation, but we also need the wisdom of the older generation to tell us, be strong, be courageous. We've seen some tough times, but God brought us through. Church family, we are stronger together. But I want to remind you, that's what he told Joshua in the Old Testament. But can I flip over to the New Testament to where our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, was getting ready to leave his disciples, basically like Moses leaving Joshua? And check out what our Savior told those who were following him, his aides in the ministry, as he was getting ready to leave. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. In the very last book of, uh, the very last chapter, the very last verse, of the very last book of Matthew, in Matthew 28, in verse 29 it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Check this out. I love it. It says, And know this, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What a powerful promise. You see, because we are probably right now in the middle of some of our biggest now what moments. Now what do I do? I've lost my job. Now what? We've got we've to we've keep our kids for another month. Now what? What else is going to happen? Can I tell you on that first now what moment that Mary Magdalene found herself at the, at the tomb? Jesus showed up personally. He showed up powerful. And he showed up capable. He showed up personally and that he called Mary by name. He showed up powerful that he had just overcome death. And he showed up capable. He held the keys of death held in the grave. And he looks at the children of at his children, the disciples that were following him, and he says, Hey, the powerful, personal, capable God is with you. I know it's anxious. I know there are times right now that we don't know what's happening. But I'm telling you, God has got this in the palm of his hands. If I could tell you everything that God has been depositing into my heart and into my spirit, we'd be here for hours. So just tune in on Sunday morning for PRC Encounter at 1045 across all of our platforms and which you can find on peerlessroadchurch.com. And I want to share you a powerful uh, passage of scripture how we can be prepared but not scared. I'm excited for it. But right now, I want you to turn, if you've got children with you, turn to uh, Peerless Kids Facebook uh, as soon as we pray and get ready to learn how Pastor Kathy is going to uh, help us to worship together as a family uh, with a, a child's lesson. If you have youth, turn to Peerless, to PRCYM Facebook page. There's encouragement there. If you're a young adult, look for our PRCYA uh, Facebook page because they're going to be getting together with you over some very powerful sessions soon. But together, let's right now encourage one another. Reach out to one another. 
Share this post, share this word with, with your connections, and let's continue to reach, connect, grow, and serve together. But right now, let's pray. Father, I thank you for my Peerless Road Church family. God, I thank you, Lord, that in that period, and I ever so mindful, just a few years ago, Lord, I was so scared, so anxious, Lord, because I was just the interim. I was just the man, Lord, to, waiting on someone else to take the mantle, and then eventually I found the mantle landing in my hands. I didn't understand what you were doing. I was scared. I was fearful. I was afraid everybody wasn't going to show up that first Sunday, but they did, and they kept showing up. And Father, you kept showing up. You kept speaking to me in my private times for it to go into a public time. And so, Father, we find ourselves in some anxious thoughts and anxious moments just like I was a few years ago. And I found such comfort in the power of your living word. I found such comfort in Joshua 1 and 9 because you were reminding me, Lord, as you were reminding Joshua, be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God will be with us. You are with me and you're going to be with us. And so for those of us that are temporarily losing jobs or we have no idea what the future is going to hold, would you remind us that you are already in our future? God, thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. And Father, you're, you are using these situations to transform us. You are using these situations right now to show us and to remind us. Lord, to shift the foundations that maybe we have set up, that we have built our hopes and our dreams on. Father, you're shifting them to the core of your foundation, of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. So Father, we place our hands in your hands. We take our, our fractured faith and place it in the hands of a mighty God. Would you remind us? Let your Holy Spirit speak to us right now and remind us, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. For you, God, our personal living God is with us everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I look forward to bringing Brooke and Braylon and Bennett together in the next few moments. We're going to continue to worship through, through uh, Peerless Kids and Peerless YM. But right there, what is God speaking to you, to your family? Allow your children to share. Allow your youth to share. Allow your husband or your wife or, or call up a friend and say, hey, what did God speak to you in just a few minutes ago? Let's all continue to grow together on this Worship Wednesday. I love you, and I can't wait to see you soon. I love you so much.